Might be nice to get a shot of you and Roman on the candid shot, stepping up. C.E. Rose is kind of the bad version. Shall we maybe not do the bad version? We pick up a couple of threads in episode five, Kendall going into work, which we dropped in the pilot. Yeah! That's what he was doing, and he was going into work. He thought he was going to become the boss, and that's what you see him doing, is being co-boss with his brother. In the writer's room, we have a board and scenarios that we could do one day, a product launch, a corporate retreat, and that seemed to marry very happily with this episode. Excited to get a feel for Scandinavia and some hotties. It offers comic opportunities as you get everyone together. It's not a trip to the Guggenheim, Greg. Find out who they like. Everyone else, welcome to the Lime Pit. Roman's in a particular state of mind. The day after the wake, I think I've gotten through it already. I pre-grieve maybe, and I feel like I'm fine. And then Madsen pulls this move. You know, it's almost like the Hunger Games, and they're trying to survive the cut. And it's just to show how powerful he is, and just to show, well, he's gone now, I'm the one and only. And that's just not a really good feeling. Ambush. You took the bait. Fatten for the kill. Thanks for coming out. No, it's not ideal. It's not like our dad died yesterday. It was a couple of days ago, so. The scene that I always think of in this episode is that initial negotiation between Matson, Kendall, and Roman, and I love the way in which they, all three parties, weaponize humor, truth, obfuscation. I feel like I'm going to the checkout during the sale and getting asked to pay more. Alex gave us a counterforce. In a way, he takes the place of Logan, not just as an antagonist, but as an actor with such gravitas and power. I, I do want ATN, though. <laughs> okay. If you don't have anything to push up against, if you don't have that friction, then you don't have drama, you don't have anywhere to go. I think as you watch with Matson, maybe you wonder, can these guys do it? Are they gonna be able to be anything near what their dad was? And I don't think it's conclusive. They don't seem to nail it, but they maybe have their own way of operating, which is in the end, not total failure. I'm not sure that that works. It worked. It's an episode of lots of power shifts, and I guess ever since the moment that Logan died, Tom was in a potentially precarious position because his protector, who he'd betrayed his wife to get closer to, has suddenly gone. Keep your eyes out, okay? If I need a pawn sacrifice, I'm gonna give you the eyes. As everybody's starting to re-strategize, I think Greg sees Tom as a weak point for maybe the first time in the season. He's really trying to figure out where to land here. Tom asks him to be his punching bag in front of Matson. He's not really willing to do that. He kind of wants to give it back to Tom. Silver play, tell us more. <laughs> well. So some of the dynamics that have been set up are kind of shifting. Kendall's taking him under his wing, pushing the quad agenda with the siblings. What's up? I want to sling some ideas around within the safety of the quad. Not sure if it's working, but going to keep saying it. What? You want it to be catchy, you know, easy to remember. Quad, family quad, three siblings plus one. The Roy Patrol, the, the old team, the, the, the family. The fuck? Yeah, like running the ship, I think we're good at it, and I don't want to stop. I mean, do you? I think Kendall is the one who's more on maneuvers for the company. I think we've tanked the whole deal. Kill it. Blow it up. And Roman is happy to go with that idea because I was really hoping someone would come up with a plan that would entail telling Matson to go fuck himself. Kendall has one, and great, let's get rid of this guy. Roman, when he goes to this meeting, I think he thinks, we're going to bullshit him. Act real sweet, act like this is going well, and we're going to stab him in the back later. Your dad, I mean, he was a prick, but at least he knew what he wanted. Roman, he just gets pushed a little too far, and this was not according to any sort of plan. I think he'd be embarrassed if he saw you two now. It's two big boys. That confrontation, to a certain extent, it would be defending dad's honor, but also a personal front to the entire family that he's using death to show how powerful he is and make a cool business move. And a little sarcastic jabs would be almost okay. I think to, to Roman, it's a little bit like, yeah, yeah, I can make that joke too. Very clever. But you just drag us out here, you inhuman dog man, you. Who's your brother? I think that's where Roman is. It's, oh, you're using this as a power move right now. He even says that to Matson. It was like, you couldn't wait. A few days, you actually couldn't do that for us. A day, couldn't let us just bury our father and then we can do the business. We're not selling to you. We are gonna grind you down. There's this anger and there's this grief that's sort of happening. So when we're shooting in Norway, I'm sure it was very beautiful, but all it did was sort of accentuate how miserable <laughs> I was. And when we got to the top of the mountain, I didn't even like see it until we finished shooting. And I think it's because Roman was so hyper-focused on having to talk to this guy. The setting could have been anywhere. We could have been in the bathroom. Yeah, I fucking hate you. And then we were done. 
I just left. We went like down to the base and I went, wait a minute, people were telling me it was beautiful up there. So I, I went and took a stroll back up to the top of the mountain and go, oh wow, it's really lovely up here. This is great. But I just couldn't see it. 